friends and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Miss Nucha and I'm from the Winfield Public Library. And today we're making empanadas from Argentina. Now, Argentina holds a very special place in my heart. First of all, I still have family living there. But most importantly, it's because of my Zia Maria. When I was a little girl, my Zia Maria, who had lived in Argentina for a number of years, moved to Canada with my cousins. And every Sunday we would visit and she would tell us these most amazing stories about Argentina. And she would cook up a storm and she would play music in the background, Argentinian music. I honestly, to this day, still feel the magic of those stories. I feel Argentina is magical. And so, Zia Maria, thank you so much for the beautiful stories and the beautiful memories you gave me. And I, I still, to this day, think about those beautiful Sunday afternoons we spent together. But Argentina has a lot of Italian influence and you can see it in a lot of the dishes. Argentina is famous for the tango, it's famous for its beef, and it's famous for its signature empanadas. Now, what is an empanada? An empanada is a turnover filled with savory ingredients. It's shaped like a half moon. Now, the word empanar means to wrap in bread or dough. Empanadas can be fried or baked. We're gonna bake ours today. Empanadas started as a working man's lunch because it has meat, it has vegetables, it's easy to carry, and it's versatile. Although Argentina boasts of its empanadas, every region has its own special recipe. Empanadas have been become the fast food staple, especially in Buenos Aires. And at every street corner, there's a pizzeria or a restaurant that carries empanadas. They're not hard to make. Empanadas are quite easy to make. And they're the perfect crowd pleaser. Typically, they're made with onions, hard-boiled eggs, olives, ground beef, green onions, red pepper, and a bunch of spices. And uh, they are delicious. So, let's get started. So we're gonna start with our filling first, and we're gonna chop up two onions. We're gonna finely chop them up. And you can make your filling a, up to three days ahead. You don't have to do it all in the same day. Because if you do it ahead of time, your flavors will um, intensify and even be more delicious. I thought of doing it ahead of time, but we will do it now. And after you make your filling, you want it to cool a little bit. So when I'm done chopping, we're gonna go on to our next one. We're gonna use one red pepper. Cut away this skin part and just finely chop it. I'm also going to add scallions, the white part. I'll save this for later. And I'm gonna add these to the onion. I thought before I start, I better get my ingredients together. I'm gonna to put one teaspoon oregano, half a teaspoon of cumin, 
I have smoked paprika, but if you have sweet paprika, that's great. One tablespoon of that, half um, a teaspoon of chili powder. I'm using cowboy chili. And you can suit your taste. And one teaspoon of salt. Just gonna throw it all in there. So this way, I'll be ready. So I just added about two, three tablespoons of olive oil. And as soon as it warms up, I'm going to add my scallions and my onions. And I forgot my garlic. I chopped up two cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna give it a minute and it's about ready. And we're gonna cook them until they're nice and soft. Garlic. And just give it like five minutes until it's nice and translucent and the onions are soft. We don't wanna brown them, we just want them soft. So about five minutes. The onions are translucent and now I'm gonna add the red pepper cook until they, the red pepper softens. Another couple of minutes. To the spices, I'm gonna just add a little bit of water and give it a quick stir. Make a paste, I see, made a paste. Now add this to it. Stir it up. Oh, mmm, smells good. And now I'm gonna add my meat. And make sure you chop up your meat so it doesn't form clumps. And that should take till you don't want to dry, but till all the red is gone. And if you don't like meat, you could add more vegetables. You can make vegetarian. But Argentina is known for its beef and its barbecues and Almost done. Doesn't take very long. Just want all the water to disappear, which it's almost all gone. Almost done. And then you want your mixture to cool. And then we'll start on our dough. And while we make our dough, the filling will cool. So it's done and I'm just gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. And we're gonna get started on our dough. So now we're ready to make the dough for the empanadas. True authentic empanadas use lard. And I don't have any lard in the house. So I'm gonna substitute a stick of melted butter. And you're gonna use a cup of warm water and you're gonna put about a teaspoon of salt in there. And you're gonna just stir it up to melt the salt. We're gonna make a little well in the center of our, you could do it on the table, but I'm gonna do it here in the bowl. And I'm gonna add a little bit of my butter, stir it in, a little bit of the water, Start incorporating it. 
a little butter. A little water. Now you could use a food processor. Just put your ingredients in the food processor and just process. But I like the feel of dough in my hands. It's almost time to use my hands. And we're gonna knead it till it forms a nice ball. I think I'm gonna give it another tablespoon of water. You, you'll know just by feel. This is it. Okay, I'll knead for a few minutes and I'll be back. So I've kneaded it for a couple of minutes and look, it feels beautiful. So now I'm just gonna do a couple more minutes and put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. In the meantime, it'll give me a chance to clean up everything in the kitchen. So, feels nice. I'm gonna wrap it up in plastic, plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator. So now it's time to get our extra fillings ready. Um, typically, they use a whole olive, but I chopped mine up in half. So some green olives. The rest of the chives, I'm just gonna throw it in. Why throw it away? And my uh, eggs that have been prepared, each one you cut into eight pieces. Typically, they also use raisins, but uh, not everybody likes raisins. So we're gonna skip the raisins. So now I'm gonna go get the dough. So here's our dough. I'm gonna divide it right away in half. Wrap it up, leave it on the side. And then I put some flour on the table and I'm just gonna roll this into a roll. and just cut it, each one, into 12 pieces. You can roll it out into a big sheet, but I think I'm just gonna do this into a little circle that fits into my hand and then we'll fill it. Just shape it into a... Otherwise, you can roll it out and we used to use things like this when we were kids, just the top of a pot and we used to cut it. You just want it to fit your hand. And it rolls nicely. And actually, look, it's almost perfect. So I've got all the others to do. So I'm ready. I added just like a teaspoon of water to thin out the egg wash. So take 
your empanada, spoon, a nice spoonful of the filling in the center, it's a nice spoon like that. Then I'm gonna just put some little chives on top, some green. I'm gonna add a couple of pieces of olive and one piece of egg like that. Then take and wet it all the way around. So you wanna seal it. And then just pinch it and seal it while you have it in your hand. And then comes the fun part. You're going to fold it. And brush it. another one. You can use a fork on the side. Some chives, a couple of pieces of olives, and a piece of egg. Wet it all the way around. and seal it. And just do like a rope. It looks so pretty. You're making a rope. And you see, it didn't really matter and practice makes it easier. And then brush it. we're going to use the empanada for this one. Here is the empanada maker. Let's see how this one works. Wet it, put it in the center. And let's see. Make sure it's pretty wet. And wow, nice, beautiful, perfectly done. But I do the rope again on this one too. wash so I've got a few more to do and then they're going to go in the oven You can use a fork, which I forgot to show. You could do this too. Just press it down with a fork.
That's probably the easiest. And then brush it with the egg. Well, I'm gonna finish them and then I'm gonna show you when they're ready for the oven. I'm just gonna rebrush them. Give them a little bent. Okay, they go in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until golden. The empanadas are done. Look at the color, they're beautiful. My favorite is the one that has like a rope on the edge. And I'm really happy with the results. It took a little longer. It took about 45 minutes because I wanted them nice and golden. And uh, both trays are done. And I'm gonna put them on the table. So both trays are done. They look and smell scrumptious. I'm really happy with the way they came out. And uh, it did take a little longer. I thought it would be done in 30 minutes. It took me 45 minutes in my oven because I wanted them nice and golden. See? You can fry them, but oven is always healthier. So let me plate them now. Well, my empanadas are ready and I love the way they look. One of the easiest things to use is this empanada maker that Don lent me. So thank you very much, Don, for lending it. It really works out nice. You pop it in here in the center of the filling and just close it. Perfect. The rope-like feature takes a little practice and I know with time I'll get better at it, but you don't have to do that. You can use a fork and just seal it. And um, this is the perfect meal to have outside. You can just go all vegetarian. Um, you can put whatever fillings you like. You can use whatever's in the refrigerator and just throw it in. You don't have to go with meat. And uh, the one thing I, would have done and I forgot to do. The next time I do it, I'm going to go ahead and take 12 of them, put them on a cookie sheet, stick them in the freezer when they're solid, I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and I'll bake them the next time when I'm low on time for cooking. You just take them out of the freezer, put them on a parchment lined cookie sheet and bake them as usual. And um, this is the perfect easy recipe that you can uh, enjoy on a picnic you can uh, the kids can enjoy it outside you can take a walk and eat your empanada so it's a uh, super simple and i hope you give it a try until the next recipe see you soon friends bye thanks for watching <laughs>